Hi everyone, welcome back. It's that time of the week again for art school. So it's really, really good to see you. I hope you all had an amazing week and uh, last week's episode was useful. Congratulations, well done to everybody that's been following along with the How to Draw series. I've seen some amazing stuff and I'll be uh, creating another How to Draw shortly, so keep your eyes out for that. This week I'm gonna be talking about drawing lips. I'm gonna give you a tour of the studio. I'm gonna talk about planning your work and I'm gonna talk about making money out of your art. If you've got a question you'd like to ask or there's some tips or advice that you feel like you need, don't be shy to get in touch. The best email to use is artschool at stuartsemple.com or you can connect with me on Twitter at Stuart Semple. Share your work with me on Instagram at Stuart Semple and use the hashtag artschool or you can get in touch on Snapchat, it's Stuart underscore Semple and uh, I really look forward to hearing from you. Let me know what you think about these, um, these programmes, if you'd like them to take a different format, you'd like them to be a bit different or you've got any suggestions, honestly I'd be really really grateful. At the end of the day I'm doing this for you, this is your art school, um, so however you want it is how it's going to be, so let me know. Can't wait to see what you've been making. Yeah, I always love hearing from you, so get in touch. Right, okay, let's jump into some questions. First of all, Charlotte, hello. Um, you've asked if I can teach you how to draw lips. Of course I can, but the best place for that is gonna be how to draw. So follow along with the how to draw series and um, we'll solve your problem. Um, just so everybody knows, Charlotte says her faces are currently blank from the nose down. Don't worry, Charlotte, we'll get there. Follow along with how to draw and before you know it, you'll be drawing perfect lips so don't worry we'll get to it chris chris been in touch on snapchat and he's asked uh, about the studio is the studio in my house and what it's like and a couple of other people have asked actually if i can show them around and show them where i paint so yes let's do it studio tour okay so this is my upstairs of my studio and uh you can see over here Oh, let me see. It's my desk and this is really important to me because I can listen to all my music and I've got hours and hours and days and days of music. You can also see here my drawing tablet which is really useful and I work a lot of my sort of compositions and stuff up here and what I'm going to do with my work. And you can also see up here I've got my bookcases, really important. I've got all my collections of books and uh, yeah, I love looking at other artists' work. And I've got my drawing table here as well. You can see that, that's where I do all my drawing. My big red heater, <laughs> you've got to be warm. And then plans, lots of plans and schemes and things that I'm trying out. Uh, my little seating area over here with some of my friend's work. Um, yeah, my friend Boo made that, isn't it amazing? She's a brilliant, brilliant drawer. Okay, so that's basically my upstairs the upstairs of the studio. And then down here, you can see, is my uh, painting space downstairs. So I'll take you down there. Then as we go down the stairs, you'll see that we've got my blackboard. This is uncharacteristically empty, apart from my son's written my name on it. Normally it is full of ideas and song lyrics and stuff, but I've just finished a series of work. So that's been wiped out recently. And then as you come down, you come into the painting room which is down here, something I'm working on now, I don't really like it, but it doesn't really matter. And then this, this is important to me, this is the big, uh, the big door, because I make quite, quite big work, so I really need a way to get it in and out. My uh, painting trolley with all sorts of bits and bobs and ideas of things and materials. And then as you get over here, I've kind of uh, got these drawers, and in them they're full of all sorts of different paint and materials and pigment and stuff like that and uh, things that I mix on. I, I use a lot of acrylic paint, you see acrylic paint all over the place in here. I suppose if we're going to do this we'll do it properly, so through here. It's not very glamorous. This is a proper behind the scenes, isn't it? This is my toilet, um, which is basically where I wash all my brushes. And uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, cores. This is from his first show he did in London ages ago. I love it. Also in here, I've got my collection of things because people send me stuff and uh, I like to collect it and I put it in this display cabinet. And they're all sorts of things from artist friends of mine and stuff like that from over the years. 
Okay, right, we're going now into the bowels of the beast. Through here is my storeroom. You can see all sorts of weird and wonderful random stuff. Basically where I store some old paintings and things that I don't really need. And an old deck chair for some reason. Oh, and this chair we used in a music video and I've still got it. Basically that's about the size of it. That is, that is my studio. The other thing that you might see in here um, every now and then there's a few sort of exercise things dotted about because uh, you see my yoga mat. Um, I like to stretch and make sure my body's balanced because when you're painting with one side all the time, honestly, you can get quite bad shoulders and stuff. So, um, yeah, there you go. Sarah, hello. Brilliant question. Sarah has asked, do I plan my work in a sketchbook or something or do I make it up as I go along? And isn't copying things cheating? Good question. No, I get that. When I was at school, it was always sort of thought that the best stuff had to come from your imagination. And if your imagination wasn't inventing this stuff, then it kind of wasn't any good. That's wrong. That's not true. And um, yeah, I really do plan my work. I, I actually collect a lot of things that inspire me. So an awful lot of pictures and piles of magazines and I take pictures on my phone and I screen grab things and write down song lyrics and you'd have seen earlier my blackboard it's obviously where I capture a lot of my ideas so there's a lot of planning that goes into it and I actually use the computer quite a lot and I collage things together and try out different ideas of paintings on there because I can kind of drag things about and get a sense of the work and then um, I'll go downstairs and I'll start painting those things onto the painting but what I tend to do is leave quite a lot of it unworked out because I feel like it's not all about me. Sometimes some flash of inspiration will come while I'm painting it or something will occur to me. So I'm quite open to the process of painting and I allow it to change as I go. So it's planned to an extent, but then I think you need to allow for the fact that spontaneous things can happen and often they're the most exciting bits. But a writer, a writer can take words out of what they write, it's quite easy to delete them, but you can't really take paint out of a painting. So I really admire artists that have an economy in their work. So someone like Velasquez is amazing. Get onto Google Earth, go to the Prado, zoom in on a Velasquez painting and you'll see the sheer economy of what he does. He, he doesn't use a million marks to describe something. One or two, sometimes a stain. Francis Bacon does this really well as well, actually. Quite often it's even an unprimed canvas and he's literally just dragged a little bit of pigment there and it says so much. And the only way you can do that kind of thing is if you plan what you're doing first. So yeah, planning's really, really important. Don't be scared to plan, don't be scared to get um, an idea together in your sketchbook or, or make a collage or Photoshop a rough idea together, that's absolutely fine. I mean, think about a musician, they write a song, I mean, they compose it before they record it, don't they? And um, I've always sort of approached my work a bit like that, like I can compose the piece and then I go and perform the piece or re record the piece because once it's down, it's not really going anywhere. So planning's great. Yes, I <laughs> hope that helps, Sarah. This is shaping up to be quite a full episode, so I'm just gonna share one work this week uh, that you've sent in. This is one that I particularly liked. This is Marina's portrait of Chris Corner from IMX. Marina, this is absolutely wicked, I love it. It's done in gel pens. I really like uh, the line here. It reminds me a lot of sort of Japanese woodblock prints. It's really stylized, it's beautiful. Yeah, thanks for sharing it with us all. It's lovely to see. Now, if there was a prize for the best question of the week, it would have to go to Richard Collins. He's uh, asked a really, really good question. It's a bit meaty, and a lot of people are shy to talk about this kind of stuff. So, Richard, first of all, this is my opinion, and you could have to deal with the fact that I'm extremely opinionated on this matter. Anyway, Richard said that he's recently graduated um, with his MA, and he's done a couple of group shows and he's been walking around galleries and looking at work and he says he's struggling to find, and these are his words, a style that sells. He's visited the London Art Fair recently. A lot of the work at the Art Fair looked expensive to make 
and he doesn't have that sort of money, how can he possibly compete? Okay, Richard, here it is, let's do it. The, art, the big um, art versus money question. So, on one hand you've got art, on the other hand you've got money. First of all, let me tell you that art is infinitely more valuable than money will ever be. Now I know that doesn't help you when you're trying to pay your bills and buy your art materials and keep going. I, I totally get that. But art is more important to the world than money will ever be. That's the first thing. The second thing is the art market is interested in the price of things. And there's a massive difference between the price of something and the value of something. Guernica is priceless. You can't put a price on Guernica, but it's extremely valuable. I could go on about Guernica forever. I could go on about a number of masterpieces forever. And the reason why they're masterpieces is because they're important to us as people. They're important to us as a society. They're important to our culture. Guernica warns us of just how brutal things can be, just how far we can take technology, just how much harm we can do to our own species. And Picasso holds nothing back. It is one of the most pessimistic paintings that has ever been made, but it is a true masterpiece. And the reason why I hate art fairs is nine out of ten of the things that you're seeing at the fair are designed for the fair, they've been made for the fair. They're designed to attract attention, to boom out from one end of the fair, to suck collectors in. They're designed to be immediate. Ideas that you get on the surface, that you get like that immediately. That's the whole point of them, something attractive, something saleable. But they tend to be quite gimmicky. After a while, you look at them and they don't really have that depth of meaning. You know, art takes time, it takes time to open up. Novelty and new will never beat you, expressing you. Please, whatever you do, don't look at the art market for inspiration. Don't look at the sales numbers or who's hot and who's not as your inspiration, as your barometer. If you download Google Earth, you can actually go to the Prado on Google Earth and you can get right up close to 14 absolute masterpieces. And I urge anybody to do that. Get up close. It's like you can put your nose right up to, to uh, a, a Goya that you would never do. Even if you went to the museum, you'd have to climb on a ladder and get your face right up against the thing. And do it. Go there. Look at great art. Think about great art. Look at that stuff. Set your barometer higher. Benchmark yourself against the greats. Do not benchmark yourself against somebody that sold something for a couple of thousand pounds to someone who had some disposable income. But what we desperately need is artists to make great, relevant, important art. So if you're waking up in the morning and you feel like you've got something to say, something you have to convey, a reason to make stuff, that is the reason to make art. Never, ever, ever Use art to make money. It's not for that. It's a sacred thing. It's a special thing. It's an important thing. And if you're passionate about it like that, and you make it for the right reasons, I'm pretty sure the money will follow. Or at the very least, you'll go to bed feeling like an artist and like you made the most of your day and that you really made something and contributed something. And what I would say is if you really want to make money from your art, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting paid to make your art. Create art that has a value, add value, give value. Make art that is useful, make art that people need. And people will be more than happy to pay for it. And the people that you'll find paying for it will be the right people you want around you, people that get you, people that understand your motivation and what you're trying to do. And they'll support you for the rest of your life. And that's what you're after. You're not after these speculators. You're not after these people who are in and out to make money or want the next cool, hottest thing for their home. Nothing wrong with those people, but play the long game, make great art, commit yourself to it, you'll be all right. That's about it. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you all next time. As always, any questions, any comments, um, you know, use the comments box below or email me, artschool at stuartsemple.com, tweet at me at Stuart Semple, share your work on Instagram, I'd love to see it. 
at Stuart Semple and the hashtag is art school or um, send me a snap on Snapchat, it's Stuart underscore Semple.